I met a gypsy. And then a lot of times those guys up there are so stuck in their way yeah. or uh, so, afraid of, so afraid of change that they won't. Or they've heard these things about me that da 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 and they're afraid to work with me. But yeah. nobody's ever really truly talked to me. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, is that, is that and, like a and barrier that's just a bunch for of you? Hearsay. I think it's a barrier for me that people have some, some other idea of who I am or people, cause again, what story is good unless you've exaggerated a little bit. So I'm sure there's so many things that have been exaggerated about me. Like I've heard that I, I sleep in with, you know, a chain to a pole because I'm afraid of lightning. I'm like, that, you know, just weird, <laughs> stupid stuff. If you're a dude that has like earned a story of being chained to a pole because you're scared of lightning, you're probably a badass motherfucker. It's like that dude in, uh, what was the Charlie Sheen movie, the baseball movie, the guy that had the fucking chicken. <laughs> yeah. he, he was like the yeah, biggest yeah, G. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, was, he was um, the biggest G of all time. Yeah. So if you, you've earned yeah, that shit, that, uh, I would, I would actually embrace that. Yeah, big, fucking big, shit. Was it, Big League was it Big yeah, League right? Yeah, Is that yeah, show, yeah. The movie Big League, yeah, I think yeah, so, yeah, maybe? yeah. Right. It was something. It so, was something like you know, like I just that. I'm just making something up. But you know, people also, you know, human beings are also afraid of change. Mm. So they know if they come to me, then I'm going to be changing them. I'm like, hey, take that shit off. What are you using that? What are you doing with that? I don't, I don't want your money. I don't need to put my arm around you to see that I'm working with some top writer. I was that. I was you. Yeah, you know what I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to teach you people. I want to teach you people. And so, you know, that's the thing. And, and, and people giving me shit, you know, t talking about bracing and all that. Well, it's logical thinking, man. It's logical thinking. Whatever you brace, you make weaker. Whatever you don't use, you lose. You know, whatever you brace, there's going to be a point where there's a weak point where it, bre you know, it, it has. Well, you spread in the where, tension you know, to something somewhere else. else will break. Yeah. And then again, pretty much whatever you don't use, you lose. And then you're taking away so much mobility, so much more efficiency out of the body and that you can't deny it. That's what I'm saying is I, I challenge anybody. I tell anybody, I go, any brace company, any scientist, any, let's have a debate, man. Let's have a debate because what you're break, what you're making is after the crash, after the mistake is happening. Mm. What I'm talking about and what I'm focusing on is not making that mistake and crash happen by having perfect functional, you know, primal positioning technique on the motorcycle, not a position that is limited because of the fear of injury of what could happen after I, I crash. You understand? So, so you're so I'm whole, putting these things on for. Sorry. So your whole uh, theory essentially is prevention is better than cure. This is that's literally like your philosophy around this in in a nutshell is that you prevent the crashes from happening instead of bracing for something that you're bracing for a future event. So prevention is better than cure in your mind. And by not wearing braces and by not having these things inhibiting your movement, you're actually going to prevent the things that you're bracing yourself for. Will you prevent them? No. Can you bring down that percentage? I believe a hundred percent because again, have I, have I, I broke both my legs under my knee brace. I tore an ACL with a knee brace on, but I compounded a femur without a knee brace on. I, I broke a T two, three, four, five, six, seven was paralyzed twice. I didn't have a neck brace on. You get what I'm saying? But I know yeah. people that have neck braces on that, that broke T four and they're paralyzed for life. So again, there's, there's no 100%. There's no 100% safety. You pick the sport, my friend. You pick the sport. You pick the most dangerous sport. And you're going to complain to me about talking to you and telling you and teaching you how to be efficient on this motorcycle because I have felt what it's supposed to feel like to ride a motorcycle. Mm. Most people haven't. So just like this kid I was teaching this, the last couple of days in Supercross, his bars were kind of low. He's a tall guy. And I said, you just never knew you were uncomfortable. You yeah. have no idea that you're uncomfortable right now. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, let's change these bars. Let's do this. Let's do this. We're going to ride outdoor for three, four days. We're going to do some trail riding and we're going to get this technique into you. He rode Supercross today. He's like, oh my God, I got told you, you didn't know you were uncomfortable. And now he goes, I cannot believe how good I feel and, and this and that. So most people are riding so bad on motorcycle. They just don't know they're uncomfortable because yeah. they don't know what riding a motorcycle correctly feels like. Okay. So again, when you, your knees at the knee point, you have 30 to 40 of interior and exterior rotation, side to side, right? 
And if you limit that, well, that's like taking 30 to 40% of any movement out of the motorcycle. Tell me how you're going to mm. ride that motorcycle. If anything that's supposed to move isn't moving to its true potential, even just a little bit of play in your throttle, you're coming back. Yeah. Just so your forks are a little bit too hard. You, you make a click or two. The bikes are so sensitive to change. The bike is so sensitive to weight being in the wrong positions. That's why the most important thing in a motorcycle is have balance. So now if you put, let's say, yourself at 170, 80 pounds up at this high level in a wrong position, you don't think you're going to affect that bike when two clicks, two pounds, and two millimeters change the bike? And you mm -hmm. got 170 pounds, 60 pounds in wrong positions up here at this high level? You're going to completely manipulate the direction of the motorcycle. Is that what I'm saying? And so that's why I think it's, it's a physics thing. It's the bike has to work with the body as the body has to work with the bike as the, you know, as a, as the mind, you know, the mind and the feel have to work together because yes, you do have to think about things, but you also have to feel the things at the same time, mm. if that makes sense, you know? And so, you know, this, this is kind of a thing I'm getting at is just teaching people the right position you know, and, and, and getting away from these old ways we've been doing things, you know, there, there's no scientific research, so to speak on these neck braces. There's no scientific anything on this. They're, they're tested in a laboratory, which you're never going to resemble a crash, but you're wearing something for the hope for the maybe that you'll be okay after the crash that you have no control over, but it's mm. putting you in such a dangerous uncoordinated, inefficient position before the crash has happened or mistake has happened that you made your, your mistakes to crashes instead of one in a hundred, now one in 10 because of where you're starting out and on the bike. Mm. That's all I'm getting at. That's all I'm getting at. I'm not, I'm not going to ever talk to you after the crash has happened because I have no control of it. No control of it. But I have all the fucking control in the world at where I'm at before the crash happens. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And so yeah. many people in motocross are so concerned about what if, what could, what might, what they don't want to happen and what's happened in the past that they set up, they prepare for it. They come yeah. into a section, they come into a corner, they come into somewhere and they prepare for what they don't want. Hope and fear. Because it's happened a few times. So when you prepare for what you don't want, guess what you get? What you don't want. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.